Hi, we're back again. This is 2015. The Situate High School, where we're located right now, is hosting the Science Spectacular. And it's new this year. It's in a different location. Things have been rearranged. N more kids. They're all excited and pumped up. Wait till you see what's inside waiting for you. What's that noise? Do you hear something? Wait a minute. I think it's my phone. What? Hold on a second. Who are you? I'm Mike Davis. Oh. Hello. We'll be right in. We're waiting. Time to we'll go. We'll be there. I can see that, the Star Lab. What is a Star Lab, Mike? I'm not sure what a Star Lab is, but I think we have somebody behind we you. We better find someone who knows. Who's this? How's it going? What's your Hi. name? I'm Scott Raddick. And I'm Mike. Hi, nice Mike. I'm Al. Nice Hi, to Scott. meet you. How are you? Not too bad. What is a Star Lab? Um, I've been in it a few times, and it's, um, it's a blow-up planetarium that gives you like a very clear picture of uh, stars on like a clear night. And it's awesome because it's like up close and personal and you see all these constellations and everything. So it's all Really? Yeah. Is it just like the situate sky at night or is it different skies or what? Well, I mean, at certain times, I mean, the situate sky is actually, I mean, it's changing more than you think and you really don't know it. But yeah, at certain times in that, you can make it look like a situate sky. Oh, I oh. see. Yep. Could you make it look like a south hemisphere si sky if you wanted uh, to? Yeah. Oh, that would yep. be neat. Great. Yep. It's awesome. So what do kids do when they come and go through this? I mean, uh, you, you just go in, I mean, you see it, and you get to see everything, and Mr. McGuire has a bunch of, he knows it, everything about it, so he, um, he gives you a lot of information about it. So you and just sit and lay down and look Yeah, up. pretty yeah. much. Yeah. It sounds it's, cool. It's pretty relaxing, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No snoring, right? So, no, no snoring. Uh, nothing. All right. Okay. Hey, thanks yep. a lot. Appreciate Thank it. You. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Good luck today. All right. You too. See ya. So, Caitlin, tell us a little bit about what you're doing here today. Hi. Well, I'm here with Noah, the Stowagon Bank National Marine Sanctuary. Which is down on yeah. near the old Coast Guard station. It goes from yes, our office is in the old Coast Guard station. Um, the sanctuary runs from Cape Cod to Cape Ann, and it's about the size of Rhode Island out well, in the ocean. Okay, so you'd need something to walk on the water with to walk out there. Yes. How do you normally? How would you normally go out there by boat? Obviously. Yep, by when, boat. Then a they lot of whale watches go out. Do they dive out there? Yes, we have maritime archaeologists and recreational divers can go and dive. And I see some things on the floor here. Are these artifacts? Yeah. So this is uh, an example of our shipwreck. Oh, wow. This is our shipwreck investigation activity. Okay. So we have some artifacts that you would find on an actual shipwreck. We have kids come. They have to answer some questions and pretend to be a marine archaeologist. Okay. To figure out who was on the ship and where it was going. And excellent. Like excellent. That. So these things were actually found in Stallwagon Bank. I assume, or maybe not, but maybe. they could They're be. They're examples. They could so be. Okay. I'm sure, they're similar. Okay, very nice. And this represents this represents a ship. Yeah. And I'm not sure if the camera can catch this, but <laughs> this would be, and I would be right diving along. Very nice. Very nice. And so, um, I think Al is interviewing some some kids over there. Is there anybody else That's that we right. want to have come over? Or is, this is a different group over there, I guess. Nope, this whole all room the same. Is all us. Ah. So we have a bunch Excellent. of different activities set up. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. Sure, I appreciate it. Good you. luck today. Thank you. I enjoy it. You are a mentor and a demonstrator at this program right here. Tell yes. us what it's all about. So this, we are basically representing Stowagen Bank National Marine Sanctuary. Um, and we have a number of activities that teach people about whales and shipwrecks because Situate has such a deep maritime archaeology and Stowagen Bank Terrific. is so important here. And we're here to educate people about that. So we have like a shipwreck, a, stim a simulation of a shipwreck there. Here yeah. With all these artifacts on it. Oh, so this is a simulation of a shipwreck. Yes. Well, first of all, who who's Aaron here? He, he you're a, you've been a mentor for a couple of years, I understand. And Aaron. Um, my name is Aaron. I'm in seventh grade. I'm also part of the environmental club. As John said, I am a recent joining member, and um, it's been very great so far. Um, Good. And yes, I think I like. Um, they told me about Stellwagen, and I'm getting to understand it more and more. Well, that's terrific. And it's it's a very helpful good thing to the environment. Good, and, and a good way to participate in your community and your environment. And who's this young lady right here? 
Marin. Hi, Marin. How are you? Good. Are you a demonstrator here today as well? No. What are you? You're kind of just learning about the environment and Stellwagen Banks. Well, great. What have you? What do you see thus far? Um, well, a shipwreck. Mm -hmm. I guess these are things that were found on a shipwreck or something. Yeah. That's great. Well, I you have many, many, many things to look at today, don't you? Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Well, nice to meet you. The, uh, where we are the Gates Environmental Club and we are here uh, doing our project on Stellwagen Bank National Marine Sanctuary. Um, it is a sanctuary for whales and other different animals off the coast of Cape Cod and Situate. Um, and this is uh, our project called uh, Blubber Glove and what it, it simulates um, a whale's blubber and how when they come up from the warm waters and they come up to our cold waters, how this is like a jacket that protects them. Hmm. And so when you when we put it in the water... Um, You've got a big bucket of ice there, I yes, see. Yeah, because it makes cold. it colder and it, it's warm actually when you put your hand in the blubber glove because it acts like a jacket. And uh, So is that blubber or other... Some this is Crisco. Crisco, oh. Bag. I used to make yes. Crisco. Yes. Yeah. Um, and? So whale blubber could... Uh, be a thickness of uh, more than like one foot. So, really? Yeah, so they get like a good winter coat. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow, that's great. And what are your names? Oh, I'm Aurora Avalon. How do you do? And I'm Maggie Blake. How do you do? Nice to meet you. Thank you for the, talking with us. Thank you. And what are these young guys doing down here? Are they part of the club yes, too? They are. Yes. What um, do you guys have going on? So we have Hi. a station called um, Eat Like a Whale, and it represents the eating habits of whales that we have in Stellwagen um, National Bank Marine Sanctuary, and they have two different types of whales in Stellwagen. We have the baleen whales, and um, this chart shows all the baleen whales that are in Stellwagen. The blue whale and the sci whale and the fin whale are rare for um, this part of rare for Stellwagen. But um, most commonly we will see the humpback whale, the um, North Atlantic right whale, and the minke whale. And um, these guys eat um, mostly the small uh, krill. Like, this um, represents what krill will look like. I see. And um, here's a picture of baleen, just to see. Yeah, um, great. So, baleen is basically the stuff that makes up your fingernails and hair. And um, these whales have this, and it's like a tool for them to eat. So it, um, this paintbrush will act like baleen when um, a whale is swimming through the water. It will get all the, um, it will skim through, and it will pick up oh, all the um, I see, yeah. Mm -hmm. Here, and the water, <clears throat> the throat here will expand, and um, all the water will get in here. But they don't want to eat the water, so they'll spit it out through the baleen. So they only have the krill left, and they only eat that. So they reverse wash, because like yeah. gargling or yeah. moving your teeth around. Yeah. yeah. Good. Zachariah, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Fine well. Thank you. So another type of whale that are that is in Stellwagen, there's actually whales and dolphins that are in Stellwagen, and they have teeth. And here are the different whales in Stellwagen, and he can explain what whales there are. Um, we have a lot of the dolphin, dolphins and um, seals. Um, these are more up north um, towards Canada or the uh, up in the northern oceans where it's a little colder. But um, mainly we have the dolphins and um, these tongs will act as the teeth. And, um, so as you, as you can see, the teeth can't really pick up the krill because they're too big and the krill is way too small. So instead they eat larger fish. So this represents the fish, and if you were a whale or a dolphin, this would be easier to eat than the krill trying right. to get it. Right. Good. So they are they cohabitate going after different sources of food. Yes, they do. Right. Well, good. Well, thank you very much. Hi, and your name is Sarah. And I'm Mike. Your Rowan. name? Really. Okay, and my name is Mike, and um, uh, we're with Situate Community Television, and I see that you have kind of a neat project about light, and uh, can you tell me a little bit about your project? You can, you can start, and then you can, whatever, whoever wants to say it first. Okay, so um, we know from science class that lead conducts electricity, so we wanted to make a 
light bulb that runs on lead, basically. It is the, once you run electricity through the lead, the lead uh, shines really, really brightly. Okay, you want to show me a little bit? Sure. Okay. Okay, wow. It eventually um, snaps and burns out because the light makes it thin. And there's too much heat sometimes. So this is going to burn out. Is that right? We but think it'll maybe it's going to get really bright and then it'll just Oh, whoops, it went out. Okay. Yeah. So that's what that what kind of a bulb was that one? Um that was the 0.7 Okay, so that was like an incandescent bulb like you'd have in your house, okay. And we had experiments with the other LEDs and we found that they didn't work as, they didn't work as good during the continuum. Um, yeah, so our hypothesis um, was partly right and partly wrong. It was since lead conducts electricity, will thicker lead produce brighter light and last longer. It, the 0.9 lead, which was the thickest lead, did produce the brightest light, but the 7 lasted the longest. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, that's interesting. So you have all of your different experiments to run through the evening, yeah. and you're going to put a new one in each time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, and have a good time tonight, okay? All righty, bye-bye. Oh, is there anybody you wanted to thank? Anybody that helped you with your project? We'd like um, to thank our science teacher, Ms. Toskis. Yeah. Introducing this topic to us. Yeah. And we'd also like to thank our homeroom teacher, Mr. Macalarni. Anybody at home to thank? Um, my mom. Oh, my you mom. had to thank your mom. Okay. Mom. Okay. And you too? Yeah. Um, we and my mom too because we had discovered that the experiment started to not work and the lead wouldn't light, and my mom somehow fixed it. Oh, good. Mums are that way. Mums yeah. do that so good. All right. Thanks. Well, here's an interesting group. Let's see what they're talking about. Excuse me, girls. You guys look like you're having a very interesting time here. Could you tell us what this is all about and why it's so interesting to you? Okay. Okay. And then you can tell me your names, too. Well, first of all, let's start with your names. Hi, I'm Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Hi, I'm Rachel. Rachel. Cassidy. Oh, we're not oh doing that's okay. Come on over. You can, you're, you're part of their audience. So what's your name? Um, Jennifer. Jennifer and? Cassidy. Cassidy, hi. Oh so this is their project and you were interested in it. So let them tell you about the project instead of telling me about it. Go ahead. You can say too. Okay, I will. The purpose of our experiment was to find out if Coke and Mentos works better than vinegar and baking soda. And as you can see, our title is Coke and Mentos versus vinegar and baking soda. Our hypothesis is that Coke and Mentos works better than vinegar and baking soda. Our procedure, our procedure, place Mentos, step one, place Mentos and Coke. Step two, place vinegar and baking soda. Step three, observe which volcano makes a bigger mess. And step four, record data. The data was, um, step one. For the Coke and Mentos, we used one liter of Coke with a normal pack of Mentos. Um, number two, for the vinegar and baking soda, we used a bottle of 32 ounces of vinegar and a half a cup of baking soda. Results. What were the results? The results? Well, the result was the Coke and Mentos worked better than the vinegar and the baking soda ever. Really? So did you draw any conclusions from that? Mm-hmm. What? In the conclusions, we found out that Coke and Mentos works better than vinegar and baking soda. This experiment was very fun. We hope you will try it someday. Well, great. Any other questions for the future? For the future, future questions. Does Sprite and Mentos work? Turn this way, look right in the camera, and tell them what do you think your conclusions were. Oh, or you mean the results? Yes, you found out that Coke and Mentos work better. The, the future questions would be, does Sprite and Mentos work? Ah. Would Coke, Mentos, vinegar, and baking soda all explode ah. together? Yeah. Oh, does, and? Does vinegar and baking soda blow up like a geyser? Or did it blow down like a sand? I see. So are you going to try that in your mom's kitchen at home? No. No. Go, go on. Really? Okay. Well, maybe these girls want to come over to your house when you give it a try and you can show them whether it works or not. Yeah, and this is the Coke and Mentos blowing up like a geyser. Wow. And this is the vinegar and baking soda kind of 
exploring that we That's cool. That's really cool. We were there. there. Were you? Great. What the Good. Well, thanks. You look like future scientists coming up with a hypothesis, hypothesis procedures, making your get collecting the data, making the conclusions. Good work. See you next year. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Hello, girls. Bye. We'd like to talk to you about your project. Okay. Is that okay? And so, well, what uh, you just you can just talk with me, and then you can talk to your project, and I'll kind of hold the microphone for you. But first, let's start out with. So what's your name? Charlotte Mendel. Hi Charlotte, and what grade are you in? Second. Second grade, a second grader. And yes ma'am, what's your name? Um, my name is Fiona Kendall, and we made slimes, and um, Ooh. they're very long. Um, so this green one is more porous. Do you oh. know what porous is? It's kind of um, powdery, um, salty. It has like, a, it looks like a little bit of salt and powdery. What makes the color? Oh, so we added blue coloring. Oh, I see. So we can tell you the recipe. Yeah, hold on. The, the blue recipe. Blue. The recipe is um, so we use glue, um, food coloring, and borax, which makes it makes it all combines and the glue sticks to itself. Oh, and you're handing out your secret recipe. Yes. Well, yeah. thank you very much. So it sticks to and we'll be itself, it but it's not right on here. here, and it combines all together, and we mix it. Great. Um, and later, we'll sell you some of the slime that we make right here. Terrific. So, not only are they scientists, they have documented their recipe and they're offering recipes. And they said if we come back later, they'll sell us some of their leftovers. So, um, our um, title is called Slime Time. And you can watch us make the slime later because we'll be making it like in, like in, like people will be here. And Great. Okay, so when you get more people around, then you make some? Okay, great. Good. Good luck with it. Thank you. So, anyway, first, tell me what your name is. Madeline. And what school do you go to, Madeline? Jenkins. Jenkins. And you, sir? Jacob. Jacob. And you go to? Jenkins. Jenkins. Okay, great. Don't worry about the microphone. Just talk like I'm just a parent that walked along and you wanted to explain to me your project, okay? And you guys are in first grade? Yes. Terrific. Great work on your part already. So this is What's the problem? The problem was why does the oil flow all water? The research was why are the bubbles so thick? The solution was we shook it, gas caused it. You shook it up and gas caused it? Yeah. Oh, great. Um, and what were the materials? Um, oil, water, food, corn, food, food coloring. Um, food coloring. Medicine. Water, water bottle. bottle. Righto. Good work. And the test started. Um, and the, the data? Bubbles. Why don't you turn this way? I'll get over the side of you. So the bubbles float up. The oil stays up. The bubbles get thicker. The bubbles get thicker. Because they're not made of oil. That's great. Now you guys are just one year out of kindergarten, right? So you're first graders and you're already doing a project at the Situate High School. Yep. I am very impressed with that. Turn around once. Wave to your mom and dad. Do you have brothers and sisters? No. Yeah, oh, I have sisters. Oh, wave, wave twice for your brothers and your sisters. Brothers, okay. And you can wave for his sisters too. Okay, good. I Thanks. Have, I so your name is Miles? Oh, two sisters, yeah. okay. Tell me a little bit about your project. I did Invisible Link. Yeah. So, an invisible ink would be good for what? Um, um, it's good for passing along secret information without anyone like noticing. So, when you write, nothing shows, but then you put something on it and it shows. Well, when it dries, it you can't see it. Some are deactivated, so when you like put it over a light or something, it'll turn like brown or something. But if some are 
I know it always is activated. All right, well, that's good. All right, well, good luck with your project tonight and explaining it to everybody. Is there anybody you'd like to thank for your project that helped you a little bit, maybe? Probably my mom. Your mom helped? Yeah. All right, well, that's well, good. Well, thanks, Mom. Say thanks, Mom, to the camera. <laughs> Take care, Miles. <laughs> Sorry about that. Why don't you go around and introduce yourselves and tell us what your name is. Uh, my name is Jack Thompson. And what grade are you in, Jack? Fifth grade. Great. Uh, my name is Avery Shaw, and I'm in fifth grade, too. How do you do? My name is, my name is Brendan Boyle, and I'm in fifth grade, too. How are you? My name is Patrick Sullivan, and I'm in the fifth grade. Hi, Patrick. My name is Joey Donovan, and I'm in the fifth grade. Fifth grade. Okay, great. Well, so why don't why don't one of you tell us about your project? So uh, we built a trebuchet. Uh, they're different. For, it's a type of catapult. It's a third class lever, so that means the fulcrum, the pivot point is in the middle. And um, we have a counterweight of 80 pounds, and uh, we've been able to launch a uh, baseball 40 feet. Really? Yes. Are you going to do it in here or not? Uh, we might be able to do it outside, but not. Here. Oh, okay, but not in the room. Okay, so. Just demonstrate without the baseball how it works. Okay. So, Can you? Yeah. Um, normally we would have like clamps to hold the weights in place, but we don't have. So you pull it back. And uh, you load in our projectile in case the, uh, the best, in this case, the best, the baseball. Yeah. And um, we just count down and we let it go and it, uh, it goes launching. Wow. Yeah. That is cool. And you've flung one 40 feet already, huh? Yeah. That is great. Good work. Nice project. And then do you like move this from one house to the next to the next so you can all use it on your neighbor's windows and things? Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, name is Wesley, huh? Good to see you again. Uh, this is Wesley's, this is Wesley's sec second year doing this? Uh, fourth. This is Wesley's fourth year at the Situant Science Spectacular, and you are doing an anti-crash boat. Yeah. You want to explain your project? I use propelling magnets so that the boat wouldn't crash. We were working on it. This is how I did it before. It didn't work because magnets were so strong that they flipped over underneath the duct tape. And so I then why is it metal, and so they magnetize to the metal from the tape, and then I put tape over that, and they stay like that. Okay. So this keeps people from banging into the dock? Yeah. Okay. Or, uh, or into other boats? Yeah. Okay. And you're at the Hatherley School? Yes. And you're in the third grade? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Wesley. Yeah. Good luck with your project today. Uh, who would you like to thank? Anybody help you? Uh, my dad helped me land the docks and get the supplies. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, good. Well, you want to thank Dad and the camera? Thank you, Dad. <laughs> Alrighty, thanks, Wesley. Good luck. So, first of all, tell me what your names are. My name is Elena. Hi, Elena. And what grade are you in? I'm in fifth grade. Fifth grade. I'm Marley. Hi, Marley. And you're in sixth, yeah. fifth grade as well. Okay, good. So, what is your project? So, we put an egg in white vinegar and let it sit there for about 18 hours or so. And let it sit there overnight. And we're trying to make it feel like really squishy and something like that. Make the egg real squishy? Yeah, it's oh. real squishy. Oh, you mean even without peeling it? Yeah, you don't peel it. Oh, really? That works? Yeah. All does. right, well, tell us about it. How'd it work? Um, so, all the calcium in the egg was 
pulled out of it and it made it it made it feel like squishy and and the shell like softened. Yeah, it like dissolved and it went to the floated and to the all top. That, the brown coloring in the shell um, was like you could just touch it and it would come off. But yeah. inside the egg was still yeah, it was yolk still and, like yolk and white. Really? And stuff. Did yeah. you try cooking any afterwards? No. I guess you couldn't open them very well yeah, either. Yeah, it's kind of hard. Right, okay, well, well great. If you really squeeze it, it could like burst open, but Ooh. I don't really recommend that. <laughs> did do, some of that happen? That yeah, happened we, some? We, but that happened yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> great. Well, thanks a lot. Enjoyed yeah. talking with you. Bye. Thank you very much. So here we are in the hands on room. The hands on room is where you'll see what's going on in just a minute. But first, tell us what's, uh, how is this set up and what do you know about it? So, this is our hands on room. We have different displays that the kids can interact with. And um, over here, you build marshmallow towers. You try to big, build the biggest tower with straws and marshmallows and macaroni. And it's really fun for the kids to see, you know, how you put the structure together and they can actually build pretty big structures and it's really fun. Do they work on it individually or like a little small group or team competition? It can be individual and it can be also small groups. Um, I don't know if they win a prize but it's definitely just fun to do. Yeah it smells good in here too. <laughs> it sure does. Yeah, it makes me hungry. So. What, you, are you uh, participating in this too? Yes. It looks like you're also helping. Look, you're working with the balloons and everything. Yeah. Look over here. Who's this? What's your name? Jackson. Hi, Jackson. And what's no, your sister? Jackson. Oh, sorry. And what's your sister's name? Piper. Hi, Piper. Hi. How are you? Jackson, go see what Good. Good. Okay. Well, we'll go over and take a look at it. Okay. Thanks for the uh, introduction to it. All right. So here we are in the hands-on room, and uh, my name is Mike, and I'm with Situate Community nice Television. Cindy, nice to meet you. Hi. And uh, hi, <laughs> we're uh, we're just trying to understand a little bit about what's going on here. So mm -hmm. can you kind of explain? Uh, looks like one of the kids is uh, looking through the microscope. Yeah. So we set up a few different types of microscopes just to give you a little bit of an intro to microbiology, um, to talk about. Um, why you wash your hands, what's good about washing your hands, and I set up some petri dishes to show you different things of, I did it with washing my hands and after washing my hands, what they look like. Oh, and to, that'd be good to show the camera. Um, tell the kids why they should do. So this is with, after you've washed your hands, and this, this is before. Before you wash your hands. Uh -huh, so, so you can you, see the what grew, so, essentially. You know, we always tell the kids that they should be washing their hands so that they don't cause germs to spread more. So this is just a good visual effect for and them that's to a, see what they look like. That's a handprint, obviously. Um, these are my fingerprints, yeah. Oh, your I fingerprints. My fingerprints Ooh. on there. So I tried to get... I think I'll get away from her. <laughs> <laughs> so I tried to get a little bit of a, um, a intro to microbiology, and then um, I plated some petri dishes to show you, you know, when kids get strep throat, when they get whooping cough, things like that, what they look like. Um, this is what causes strep throat. You can't see it very well. It just causes these little teeny tiny colonies mm -hmm. um, and they eat through the media. You can see that it goes through it. So you can see actually see through the mm -hmm. media. That's just um, one of the characteristics of the bacteria. Um, I also plated different types of media. So what it does is working in the lab, 
you kind of use this as a puzzle or a guessing game and you try to determine what illness you're getting, whether it's something food related, so if you ate something bad and then you feel sick the next day, you have a stomach bug. Um, what the microbiologists will do is put them on certain plates and each of these plates have certain um, indicators, so depending on what grows on the plates will give you a determination of what the organism is. Does that determine the color? Is that the um, color so a factor? The colors help you just help you uh, determine what it is. So certain bacteria will turn green, others will turn blue, um, others and then even more will turn pink, purple, depending on what type of things they are growing. Um, and then on the microscopes they have um, bacteria that are moving, so you can actually see them in motion. And then um, just the basic microbiology, it's a gram stain to show them what we look like, um, what they look like under the microscope. So here we just have different, um, what's bacteria, why it's good to wash your hands, um, things like that. Perfect. Yeah. And you're, are, you a, are you a teacher here? No, I'm just a volunteer. So, wow, you did um, a great job. Well, thank, thank you. you so much. Appreciate it. Watch us All right, we're here. We're here with a couple of rocketeers. The first rocketeer we're going to talk to is... Hi, my name is Jack Tarsella. I'm Hi, Jack. Tell us about your project. Well, well, first of all, well, first of all, the pressure, how it launches is the pressure from the water, pressure from the water builds up so high that, that the water, that the rocket naturally just shoots up in the air. Really? Yeah. So how did you uh, discover this? Well, well, my dad was, well, my dad, well, at first I had, well, I first had no idea what I was going to do for, for this science fair. So, so then, so then I went up and looked up some good science fair projects, and then I happened to stumble upon this. I, I was really stoked on the idea, and I just wanted to get right to work. Well, that is great, Jack. And who, who's your friend that you're doing this with? Well, my friend out there launching the rocket is Eric Jernberg. Eric? Here, actually, here comes Eric right now, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Is Eric coming? Yeah, I think he is. I think he's filling it up. Oh, okay, we'll wait a minute. Okay. We'll take a pause. Maybe you can talk a little bit about the test data. Yeah, tell us about the problem that you're trying, the research that you did. Okay? Okay. You can read it. Well, first of, all, well, first of all, we didn't know if more water or less water would propel the rocket higher. So we did some research and we found out that, that our rocket launches by pumping air into a bottle, which creates pressure in, in the bottle. The pressure causes the bottle to fly. Hmm. So, what did you find out? More water or less water was required? Well, le well, well, we sort of found the line on the water, on the bottle, and that line sort of, that line is really useful because we've been using that amount of water, and it really propels it high. I see. I see. So, tell me about your tests then. Well, the tests. Well, we test. We did one at my, we did one at my partner Eric's house, and. Oh, here he is now. Here's Eric. Hi, Eric. Hi. Hi, what's your name, Eric? Eric Jernberg. And what school do you go to? Cushing. We and both you're in Cushing. what grade? Third. Third grade, with, and with him, it, with, it same, you both guys are in the third grade? Yeah, uh -huh. and oh, we great. did the same class too. Really? Terrific. Same homeroom, same yeah. teachers. Yeah, great. So, he was telling us about how the project worked, and I understand you're going to go out and give us a demonstration in the field. That one wasn't really good. Uh, do you yeah. want to do another one? Yeah. Okay. okay. Is, it, is it ready to go? Yeah. So that's the right amount of water? Yeah. Let's show us. Come on over and show us this gadget. All right. So that looks like it's about a quarter full. That was what you found was about the best? Yeah. All right. Well, go give it a shot, buddy. We're going to watch.
very impressive young men. So what what uh, what are your names? Uh, uh, I'm Aiden O'Neill. And I'm Jacqueline O'Neill. Hi, are your brothers? Yep. Okay, and uh, what grades are you in? I'm in sixth grade. And I'm in eighth grade. Great. And he goes to Hatherley and I go to Gates. So are you a mentor for this project? Um, not really. You're just a, a fellow demonstrator? Yeah. Great. Super. So you started with a smaller version. Could you tell us what your project was? Um, making a hovercraft. Just like on here. And this tells you how it works. The leaf blower blows air into the plastic sheet or bladder and creates a bubble. The holes make that air escape the bubble. The plastic hot chocolate can lid makes the part of the bladder in the center not forced down by the air, which is shown right here. It's just covered in duct tape. Uh, this makes a donut shape out of the bubble. The area in the center is then a chamber for the air to go in. When more air comes into the chamber, the other air has to escape. The air escapes by going under the part of the hovercraft that is touching the ground, causing the hovercraft to move up. Right, and in tape, I mean, all right, so here's a nice little picture of it right there. Um, so essentially what happens is the plastic right there, it fills up with air like a balloon, right? And, um, but there's a little thing, that thing as you can see in that picture, right there, it's stopping the middle part from going up, right? So um, then also there's some holes coming out of there, right? And so there's a bunch of pressure under there from all the air being stuffed in there and such. So it wants to come out of there, right? But it can't until, I mean, because um, there's all this force pushing down on it, like from the uh, person standing on it or the hovercraft itself. So um, what needs to happen before the air can get out is that it, um, it has to equal the pressure of the, all the force pushing down on it. Very interesting. And this is yeah. a smaller version of it you were demonstrating earlier, I see. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Do you want to see it? Sure. What the heck? So it works in a similar way, really the same way. It's just this has a bigger hole as opposed to six small holes. And this fan, which powers it, blows air into here and makes it work just like that one over there. And it also blows air into the back, which makes it move forward. Okay. Let's so see it. So when I turn it on, it'll start the fan. Make it move. Whoa, it really like shoots that. around. Mm -hmm. As light as can be, isn't it? Yep. That's a great project. Is this your first project in the Science Spectacular? Uh, no, I did one last year and you did one for... Um, we did one time. together last year and then the year before that I did one on my own. Good. So, yeah. Is this your last year to do it or...? Um, uh, we'll probably yeah, do we'll it probably do it again. again. Great. That's good to hear. Thank you very much. So, so anyway, my name is Mike from Situa Community Television. Your name is? Hannah. Hannah, nice to meet you. And your name? Ava. Ava, nice to meet you. you want to tell us a little bit about your project? Okay, well, we did a homemade lava lamp, and Ava will tell you what you need. Um, you're going to need three-fourths of water, and then you're going to need ten drops of food coloring. Um, you're going to need vegetable oil also. Um, you're going to have to use the whole bottle. Okay. <laughs> then, 
All right. Um, without the tablet, without the tablet's fizz, the color drops, the color drops stay on the water shield and then slowly goes into the water. So like the um, the food coloring just rests on the water and like turns the water that color. Um, because it goes in. Yeah. It goes into the water. And you have you have protective eye eyewear on so that you don't get anything in your eyes, um, or is that just so you look like scientists? So it looks like scientists. Oh, okay, I got it. But now. if okay. you did get it in your eyes, that yeah, you don't want to do that. I put it with the tablet. Algae seltzers, like a lot of people know, when you put it in water, they make fizz. But since the water has turned a different color from the color drops you use, then instead of having just um, clear bubbles going up, it uses that color and then it goes up. Uh -huh. So that's why it creates those bubbles. Wow, that's great. Uh, okay. Is there anybody you'd like to thank for you helping you with your project at all? Um, your mom. She got all My mom and her mom. Oh, that's wow. Right. Well, thank you. And I want to, I want you to turn around and face the camera because I want everybody to see your little, your little emblems and your names. Thank you so much. Good luck with your project tonight. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Okay, so here we are uh, uh, to understand more about exploding Coca-Cola, I think. What's your name? Sophie. Sophie, look right over here just a second. Sophie. Say hi, Ma hi Mom. Hi, Mom. And you are? Annie. Hi, Annie. And what grade are you in? Fifth. Fifth grade, and you are in? I'm in third grade. In third grade, okay. So, tell me about your project. Our project is to see um, what explodes more, the Coca-Cola or the Diet Coke. So what we did was we got Mentos and we um, wanted to see which one had more left in it. Yeah, so first we would unscrew the cap, put a few Mentos in, put the cap back on and shake it. And then we would take the cap back off. So I have to take it and like explode because um, it's just like the kind of like the pressure so but surprisingly the, the coca-cola exploded more than the diet coke yeah. really? so the coke was more explosive than the diet coke. yes do you have any idea why no maybe that's next year's experiment try to figure that out yeah. that'd be good yeah you could write to the coca-cola people and ask them if they can help you yeah yeah, yeah. so let's hi Oh, you gonna you gonna show us? Okay, oh, yeah. here we go. So, here we go. So, and then we have the mentor. So, the mentor. And then, and here, just go. So that one, and then put that, and then put this one. Oh! Wow! Yeah. Whoa. I bet you have a lot of sticky floors in your house. Yeah. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> Okay, well, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Mike from Situate Community Television. Hi, and I'm Peg Legendre from the Cambridge Science Festival. Oh, wow, thank you for coming down. Oh, you're very welcome. And you want to tell us a little bit about your table here and what the Cambridge Science Festival is about? Sure. Well, the Cambridge Science Festival has 177 STEM events over the course of the April vacation during that 10 days. There are events for families, for kids, for teens, for adults. Um, there are tours of MIT. There are events that are happening in Boston, Cambridge, uh, Quincy, Bridgewater, Fitchburg Lemonster, out as far as Framingham. So kind of all over. We have lots of events that are, can be found online at the CambridgeScienceFestival.org uh, or from our book. What we have here today is some of the activities we take out year-round and statewide with our Science on the Street Outreach Program. So we bring hands-on activities to kids and community events um, throughout the state. Uh, wow. So we, today we're featuring our wind table and our wind tube, and we also have our Makey Makey, which the kids uh, hold carrots and potatoes to play a game. Okay. Okay. So but we, we have a, a number of activities that we take out year-round and statewide. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming down here. Hopefully you have a good evening and everybody gets excited about your project. I can talk about your project right, for us. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well done. Turn this way and, and tell me what your name is. I'm 
I'm Paige Humphrey. Hi Paige, how are you? Nice to meet you. What grade are you in? Fifth grade. Fifth grade, okay. Thanks. And you're at Gates then? Um, no, no, I'm at Hatherley School. Oh, Hatherley School. And you are? I'm Maya Block. Hi Maya. And I'm in fifth grade. At, at Hatherley. At Hatherley. Okay, good. And um, our friend did it with us, but she's sick right now. Her name's Brooke. Okay, Brooke's not with us today. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, tell us about your project. So we are trying to see if um, the different types of candy change the temperature of the water. Um, so we have starlight candy, which is this type of candy. We have lightsabers, which is this kind of candy. And then we have Jolly Ranchers, which is this type. So starlight, lightsabers, and Jolly Ranchers. So we took the temperature of each water, every water, and so this one it's a control, control bowl, and it is sixty-eight point two degrees. And then for each one, what do you think will happen? Do you think the starlight candy will change the temperature lower? Stay the same or go up? I don't know. I don't don't know if it will or not. I've never thought about that. It's a very good question to ask. So we thought it would make it go lower, hmm. but it's supposed to go up. And it's not doing that right now. Hold on, let me. Oh. Okay. There we go. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Yep. yep. So well, it made it go lower. Mm hmm. Hmm. Now, will it it'll eventually get to the same room temperature, do you think? Yes. So you just recently put it in there, and it, yeah. uh-huh. So then, but if you let it out overnight, then everything comes to the same temperature. So that was the, uh... uh Starlight candy. And this is the lightsaber mix. And we thought they were going to go down. But, and turns out they do. Yeah. So... Those are different types of mints. They usually warm up your milk, like Starlight Mints, which you'll smell too. Um, but these ones are made with different ingredients, so it makes it cooler, your milk. So that's why the temperature is dropping. Yeah. I see. Oh. So, and then, we took Jolly Ranchers and did them. So we thought this would not change at all. And it actually goes up. Yeah, it actually really? does go up. Um, Normal candy, when you suck on it, like lollipops or something, it will just make the temperature look this way. Um, stay the same. But when you use Jolly Ranchers, they're made with different ingredients. They're made with corn syrup and sugar. So when you crush it up and put it into water, it will release energy, which makes the temperature go higher. Very good. That was quite an experience. What what brought what brought you to investigate this particular? We project? were very interested in candy. Yeah. So we decided to look up some ideas, and then we found this. Yeah. Amazing. That's a brand new discovery. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Open, so they're open now. And then some important 
vocabulary you should always uh, remember about okay. your heart. Is the right atrium to the I see Harry's sister. And the right atrium receives oxygen core from the body and the houses the heart's, heart's pacemaker. Uh huh. And then the right ventricle, which is right here, pumps blood to the lungs. I need to ask you a question. What did you learn through this project? I learned a lot about the heart and like, um, and the heart is a very important part of your body because it, it makes the oxygen and yes, the it. blood and all yeah. of that. And do you want to be a doctor when you grow up? Yeah, that's what I oh, want good. to be. And your name is? Con Vitrihan. Yeah, and, and do you have anybody you'd like to thank for helping you with your project? I'd like to thank my family for helping me and, and we had to do it on the last minute. So oh, they okay. helped me, um, help me print stuff out and all that and they helped me pronounce the stuff. Oh yeah, that's the hard part is pronouncing. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. You want to wave at the camera and say mm -hmm. hi to your folks? Hi. <laughs> thank you, take care. So we're at a project right here that's about candy, and as you can see, it's surrounded by young boys all looking for candy. But anyway, we're going to talk to the young women who have put this project together right now and find out what it's all about. So, who do we have here? Um, I'm Zoe, this is Liz, and this is Abby. Hi. Hi, Abby. Hi, Meg. Elizabeth? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Zoe. And what grade are the three of you in? Um, we're in sixth grade. Sixth grade. Great. At what school? Hatherley School. Okay, good. Right in my neighborhood. Well, tell me about your experiment. How'd you come about it? What you did? Why um, it's interesting? So we came about it because we all liked candy and we wanted to see the science spectacular. And um, so uh, we all just chose the idea to do a candy addictions. Um, we uh, all our family mates chose uh, like a special candy that they loved, and then we like made a result and conclusion. I found this. I see. Yeah. So you all have candy addiction. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Good. Well, tell us about it. Um, so basically, we um, asked people, different people, if they wanted to um, ask if they wanted to test it. So we had people test it and find their favorite, and we put it on a graph. Okay. Yep. And so basically, and then we told why they are, people are addicted to sugary things. Why is that? Um, because there's a pleasure center in your brain, and it lights up when you eat a sugary something, even if it tastes better or it looks better, and so they're addicted to it because they want more. I see. So different people have different bulbs going off. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, thank you very much. Was it a fun experiment? Yeah. Good. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mike from Situate Community Television, and you're Emily, and your name is? Claire. Claire, and what school are you in? Cushing. Cushing, oh boy. You want to tell us a little bit about your project? Sure. So, this is the purpose, to see what happens when you combine milk, food coloring, and soap. If we use different types of milk, is there a different reaction or the same reaction? 
different types of milk being what? Skim milk, two percent milk, and whole milk. Okay. And so, what did you? What was your? Uh, what were your results? These were our results. So with, 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 what's the one to the left? Uh, so with, with this milk? That's skim milk. So it, you had a lot? Yeah. And then with, what's that one way over there? Buttermilk. What's that one? Buttermilk. Buttermilk, oh. And what's the one that has the least? Cream. Cream. Oh, that was cream? Oh, okay. So, and your conclusion is? Okay, well that's great. Thank you so much for sharing your project. Is there anybody you'd like to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank my mom, my brother, and my sister for being excited for me to be in the science fair. And how about you? i like to thank my whole entire family for getting me to do the science fair. Oh good, let's wave to them. Wave in the camera. Hi. Observer, Thanks. are you? Good for you. Well here we are. We're going to learn about floating the unfloatable, and we have two scientists who are going to talk to us about it. So what's your name? My name is Cece. Hi, Cece. What school are you in? I'm Hadley. Hadley. At what grade? I'm second. Second grade. Okay. And you are? Courtney. Hi. And what school? Hadley. At the second grade level? Yes, please. Great. Well, tell me about your project and why it was interesting to you. Well, well we thought that... Um, things float so why can't candy so we try we wanted to see if candy would float so we have sprite and water and we want to see if what do you think do you think it will float or do you think it will sink wow do, do i think candy will float or not yeah you mean with the wrapper off or with the wrapper on with the wrapper off with the wrapper off I don't think it'll float. You don't think it will float? No. Okay, okay, so let, we just want to put a tally here. And what candy would you like? So, uh, candy. let's do the Milky Way in uh, gr light green. Oh, okay. So, so these, this one? Yeah, one yeah. of those. Okay, so you can do it too. All right, um, so hold it. Before you do it, let's put it over here where, where the camera can see okay. it. All right. And Cece's going to demonstrate first. Ready? Okay. So in this we have to give it a second so it so we can see if it will float or sink. And so I'll do it's not the water. Floating. Yes, but we have to give it a second. So oh we do, okay. Yes, sir. Oh, oh what, look at that. See? Yeah. See it's wow. floating in that. But in this it doesn't float because the bubbles in this um, make it float and acts like a life jacket because of the carbon dioxide. And the water doesn't have any or enough to make the candy float. I see. So the carbon dioxide in the soda water yeah. makes it float. I'll be yes, darned. But the I bet it makes it taste better in the soda <laughs> water too. I don't know. Yeah, that's um, right. And the three musketeers floats in both of them because it has air inside Oh, is that and right? Yes, and now you can demonstrate. Okay. So what the three musketeers will do is, so I will take the three musketeers, and that's the soda, and that's the water. I'll plop it in the soda, and it actually floats. It floats right away, doesn't it? Yeah. And in the water, it floats too. Wow. Because the soda, it, well, inside it has air in it, so, and the carbon dioxide, and yeah, that's how it floats. Yeah. But so I guess if you're like, go swimming or something, you want to be sure to take Milky Ways, because <laughs> if you drop it, well then, yeah. you won't lose it, right? Yeah. Right, okay, good. Thank you very much. Good discovery. Thank you. Hi, Thank my you. name is Mike from Situate Community Television. Hi. And you are? I'm Victor. And you are? Charlie. Charlie, how are you? And you're both, you're both with the Cushing School, I yeah. see. Yeah, we're both Could in the same class. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. So you're teammates. Yeah. In their same project. Friends. You want to tell us a little bit about your okay. project? So, what we have here is we have baking soda on one side, mentos on the other. So, we put a one tablespoon of baking soda in these two liter bottle drinks, like Pepsi, Diet Coke, Ginger Ale, Mountain Dew, and Fanta. And we got different explosions, like half a foot to three and a half feet. And then over here we put one full pack of Mentos, which I believe is eight Mentos. And we got minimal explosions for most of them. Like we 
got one inch for two of them. And, and then Diet Coke won again, and so did there. And then over here we have our hypothesis for Mentos, our purpose, our procedure, our results. And then this says why putting Mentos in soda works. And then over here we have the hypothesis, purpose, procedure, results too. And then we made a graph of how much each one went up. Okay. So yeah. tell me the results for baking soda. Well, Diet Coke and Pepsi with baking soda created the largest explosion, while ginger ale, uh, Mountain Dew, and Fanta had less. Had less. And uh, what about uh, then, your results with, with Mentos? Diet Coke and the Mentos created the largest explosion with three and a half feet, while Mountain Dew and Fanta and Mentos had very little chemical reaction, and then and, uh, ginger ale, too. So basically, the Diet Coke was the most in both of them, right? Yeah, they both got a uh, three and a half feet. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Is there anybody you'd like to thank to help for helping you with your project? Uh, well, our, um, what was her name? Her name is Emily. She was our mentor who helped us. So thank you, Emily. Uh, and, and I guess our parents, because they helped us with this. So okay. thank you, parents. All right, thank Give them a wave. You. Thank you. Are you on this project? Oh, yeah. Three of us. Okay, good. Wait till she's done talking. There's a judge looking at this project right now, so we don't want to interrupt him. He's the judge. judge this evening. Uh, yes, I am. That's very nice. We're, we're here with Channel 8. This is a local yes. community. Yeah, yeah, right. So what do you see tonight? What are the kind of interesting things you're running across? I'm, I'm seeing a whole new generation that I haven't seen before. Oh, yeah. Starting to get, sure. understand that they can make their own measurements of the real world and make their own observations and really come to some conclusions. It's amazing. No matter how 
uh, seemingly simple or complex a project is, they're all following a process, and I think that's the purpose. They of do, it. yes. Yeah, to learn the, the step to do. And, and, and I'm just amazed at what I'm seeing at this yeah. age. Well, that's great. It's great. great. It's a great thing to do for the school. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So my name is Mike, and I'm with Situate Community Television, and your name is Colina? Nugent. Colina Nugent, okay. And can you tell us a little bit about your project? Yeah, you didn't have to do it now. Yeah, we didn't have to do the race but this time. I want to do it by myself. <laughs> and then you place the balloon on the water bottle and pour baking soda into it and then it blows up. Yeah. It doesn't pop. It doesn't pop? It doesn't pop. No, is it supposed just to like pop? This. It's just like that? Is that one that really did it? Oh boy, yeah. that's gonna that's good. Now can you can you do one while we're here? Can you do it while we're here, or is it something you have to do earlier and get ready for it? Yeah, you have to get ready for okay. it. So you have to like, put the baking soda in the balloons before you come here, or it's going to take a really long time. So what was the fun part about this whole project? The fun part is watching the balloons blow up. Wow, isn't that good? It's easier than blowing them up by yourself, okay. right? you want to show them how to do it? Now that's vinegar? Is that vinegar? Uh-huh. Okay. And what's in here? Baking soda. I have to have it. Okay, that, yeah, I understand. So mom's given a hand here. And then you pour it in. Wow, that's quite a project. Well, thank you so much. You're and who would you like to thank for helping you with your project? My mom. Your mom? Okay, wave to your mom up here in the camera. The ele Thanks, future mom. electrical engineers with the okay, Vandy Graph luck. Generator. Bye -bye. And uh, these young ladies just won an award. Show us your ribbon. Here it is. Just won the ri a ri a ribbon, ribbon Excuse me, from the judge. Put it right back up here so everybody can see it. And tell me, what is your name? And you're in what grade, maybe? I'm in fourth grade. A at what school? Wampatuck. Wampatuck. I'm on a McCann. And you are in the same school? Yeah. Okay, great. I'm Freya Haley, and I am in the same school as them. In the same grade? Yes. Good. So how'd you come up with this project? Well, we had some people from the museum, the science. Oh, the science museum in yeah, Dawson? So some people came to our school and they did a whole project on this and so that kind of inspired us to like get make our own we'll and do a poster about it and the science spectacular was coming up so we decided maybe we'd sign up and like show it off yeah it's a very challenging project and you obviously did a good job thanks thank you, thank you. Right. we have another group of electrical engineers here uh, who are going to look into conductors so first of all let's start out with who are you well, I'm Cassidy. And, and tell me your grade and your age. Are you date? Well, I'm in fourth grade. At the which school? At Wampachuck oh, School. Good, good. I'm Emma Riedel. I'm I at Wampachuck. In fourth grade. Fourth grade, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Same. Um, I'm Jennifer. I'm in fourth grade. I go to Wampachuck, and I'm just saying they did the project. I'm just helping them, so okay, I didn't good. actually do it. I'm just, all right, well, good. Don't want to take credit. I'm sure you're a good help. Well, tell me about your project. Well, do you want me to give you the presentation? Yeah, sure. Okay, <laughs> so. Why don't you hold this? Just like that's okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, and we'll make you official presenter here. May I? Let's just pull this sure. a little bit. There you go. Okay. Talk away. Um. Well. 
what makes what materials are better conductors and our purpose was to find out which materials were better conductors um, the hypothesis was metal magnets and copper are better conductors than other materials the procedure was you put the different objects in between the two clips to see if they were conductors or insulators and Emma, you can talk too because we can hear you do that. So just start talking and be okay. Mm -hmm. Our data, you, you, we, you can read like the extra stuff, I'll read the data. Okay. Our data was like what's the highlighted in yellow. That means they were conductors and then they made the light bulb bright. Anyway, and the ones that are highlighted purple and they say off, those were insulators and they didn't turn the light bulb on. So show us one that doesn't. <laughs> the squinky. Ah. Squinky, by the way, is made out of plastic. plastic. So it didn't work. So why do you think some are conductors and some are not conductors? Um, I think it's like the way they're made. I know it's because some of the um, some of the materials we put on what the source of the materials were. And we realized that plastics didn't work, woods didn't work, and a lot of, but a lot of like nickels and stuff work like that. So, yeah. Um. Like, I'll take this one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um. Should I read? The, yeah. Here. Yeah. So, electric circuits are all over your home. Just take a look at the lamp. Switch it on, and it lights up. Why? When you turn the switch, you close the circuit from the lamp on the other, on the outlet to the wall, into the wall. Electrons that flow freely, creating electricity. The switch acts like a bridge. When the bridge is down, electrons move around the closed circuit. But turn the switch again, and the bridge lifts. This change, this change leaves an opening in the circuit that electrons can't cross. And that is pretty much what we did. Good. Well, thank you. So if it has free electrons, then it's a conductor. If it doesn't, then it's an insulator. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. And thanks for giving them help. I'm sure they appreciated it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.